Welcome back to ArcGIS News. I'm Peter Klingman. You might have heard that the June 2020 ArcGIS online update is coming up shortly. Today we have a special game show segment that will test participants' knowledge on the new features and functionality coming in the update. We can't quiz them on everything, but we'll definitely make sure they know the highlights. We'll ask them about the new homepage configuration experience, updates coming to Map Viewer Beta, new reports for admins, the new express setup option for certain configurable apps, as well as sublayer pages. But first, let's meet our contestants. From Ottawa, Canada, Konchna Karthikian. <laughs> From Redlands, California, Linder Ringo. And hailing from the Bay Area, Kevin D. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Now, who's excited for the June 2020 ArcGIS Online Update? Okay, let's get into it. First question, what new elements will organizations be able to add to their homepage? One element I'm excited about is the multiple galleries to showcase the maps, apps, and layers that are important to my organization. That is correct. For an extra point, can you elaborate on exactly how an organization can do this? I'd love to. The new homepage editor provides an interactive set of tools that allows me to make a better homepage. As I mentioned, when I buzzed in with the correct answer, I can use the editor to add up to five galleries to showcase my organization content and can choose an immersive background image. More than anything, this provides an on-brand, modern, more visually pleasing entry point into my organization that works well on desktop as well as mobile devices. It is important to note administrators and custom admin roles with organization website management privileges can create and edit the custom homepage. I'm very excited to see all the new homepages. Okay, on to question two. What are some major new features coming to Map Viewer Beta at the June 2020 ArcGIS Online update? There's a lot, and I've been excited for some of these for a while. Group layers, improved symbology, labels for clusters, and tables. Another contestant with the correct answer, Kevin. Care to give us a rundown on these updates for two more points? Wait, I get only one extra point? Points, schmoints. Who's keeping track anyway? I just want to hear about group layers. We'll be able to group layers directly in the table of contents. I can simply select the ellipsis next to a layer and choose to add a new group or drag layers into an existing group. Then I can turn on and off all the layers within a group at once. I can now access a layers table and standalone tables in Map Your Beta as well. Improved symbology is also exciting because I'll be able to use new vector point symbols that look sharp at all scales and I can change the color. I'll also be able to author labels for clusters, including the number of features that apply to each cluster. And finally, there is saved rotation. This means I can level out angled waterfronts like Toronto before saving the map and sharing as a web app. Thanks for the rundown. Again, very excited to try this stuff out. I had no idea Toronto was so angular. Fascinating knowledge being shared here today, folks. On to question three. What data can administrators export with the new reporting tools? I think I know this. Members and items. Exactly. I have to say, I'm very impressed with how prepared each of you are. Linda. What information will be available in each of those categories? For the members report, admins will be able to see information such as last login, license tabs, and number of groups and items. For the content report, number of views, date modified, and the shared level are important fields. Reports are saved in your ArcGIS Online organization for future reference as well. I can create a report simply by browsing to the status tab in my organization settings, choosing reports, 
selecting the report type and a name, and clicking Create Report. Personally, for my administrative needs, I just want to export a list of users and their email addresses or see which content has the most views. With the new reporting capabilities, most tasks are easy. And while we are on administrative update, I am so excited that I can now prevent users from downloading ArcGIS Pro from their user settings page. This is a great feature, but since we use Pro in a virtualized environment, my users shouldn't be downloading it on their local machines. Thanks for going over that. On to our penultimate question. But first, scores. Concha, two points. Kevin, three points. Linder, three points. Peter, seven points. Okay, there's a new experience when creating a nearby configurable app. What is it? Are you sure your points calculation is correct? Why, yes. I think I know this one. It is an express setup option available for not only nearby, but also minimalist, zone lookup, interactive legend, and attachment viewer. Correct. Can you go in depth on what that means for the configuration experience? Definitely. When creating a new nearby application from MapViewer, I immediately am shown four quick steps to set up an interactive app that allows users to search for points of interest. The Express Setup helps me focus on those critical configurations that will move me from map to interactive app in an instant. I start with the map option where the web map is already selected. Then I can configure the About tab. From there, I can select Next to choose a theme and lastly, choose how my users will interact with my app. If I would like, I can also switch to the full setup to fine tune my app further or add more capabilities. The draft is auto-saved after each change, so all I need to do now is hit publish and my app is ready to share. I love how straightforward that is. And the final app looks great. Thanks for explaining this. 10 points for you. Woo-hoo, yeah, woo. For double or nothing, can you tell me which two of the following four login options are now available with ArcGIS Online? Reddit, Apple, OpenID Connect, and Netflix. OpenID Connect and Apple? Another correct answer. Nice work. Our fifth and final question is about sublayer pages. What are they and what will they provide? The sublayer page is an item details page for each sublayer within a hosted feature layer. For example, if I were to publish a hosted feature layer with a multiple bird observation layers, in some reference layers before each of these layers would be represented by a single item details page that provided details about all the sublayers. Now, each of these layers has a sublayer specific page with its own description, access and use constraints, data, and visualization tabs. You can create views, append data, export data for the selected sublayer, and open just selected sublayer in Map Viewer. Thanks for the impromptu deep dive. This will give me a lot more information about sublayers in a hosted feature layer. Now for a true false bonus. Can you now control geometry updates for specific sublayers as well? True, please tell me I get points for this. Right you are, and you do. 3.719 to be exact. Well. This brings us to the end of our game show competition. We covered a lot today. The redesigned homepage, a ton of updates to map viewer beta, new reports for admins, the new express setup for configurable apps, as well as sublayer pages. And our contestants really knew their stuff. Be sure to keep your eye out for the what's new documentation and blogs, releasing at around the same time as the update. Again, a big thank you to our contestants. Reporting live from Redlands, I'm Peter Klingman. Wait, wait, wait. Who won? With so many great new features coming to ArcGIS Online, the points don't matter. We're all winners.